Hey, welcome everyone to the Learning to Birth webinar series where we interview some of the world's most interesting and inspiring thought leaders on birth and pregnancy. Today we've got a very exciting, interesting discussion with Amy Hatterer. Welcome, Amy. Thank you for having me on. Yay, you're welcome. Everyone, Amy, if you don't know about her yet, she's going to be world famous in a couple of years from now. <laughs> she's going to be you know, up there with Ariana Huffington and then the creators of Spanx and, you know, she's just going to be a global name, you know, Elon Musk, eat your heart out, <laughs> right? Because Amy Kay okay, is a childbirth assistant, doula, artist, birth activist, mother of six, four, <laughs> and founder of Motherboard Birth. For over a decade, Amy has provided hands-on support to hundreds of families during the childbearing, childbearing year. That's just awesome, Amy. Thanks. I love what I do. <laughs> Uh, no, no, look, we're going to talk a bit about Motherboard and what you're all creating there. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your backstory and your journey about how you got, you got to be like, you know, the, 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 about to be the world's biggest entrepreneur <laughs> at the intersection of tech and motherhood? <laughs> awesome. I like it. I should have you do my intros all the time. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm, I'm so there. <laughs> So um, really my journey began with the birth of my first baby. So I like to say that each of my daughters has really given me a gift. Um, so I do have six kids, but I've only given birth to three of them. So we kind of Brady bunched it. I have three and my husband has three. Mm -hmm. um, but when I, I like to say my first daughter made me a mother, which sort of rearranged my atoms and my cells and made me this completely different being. My second daughter made me a doula. And that was such an amazing opportunity to serve um, people during their birth experience. Uh, my third daughter made me an artist, which I was kind of al always an artist, but I, um, I'm, I'm a fine artist. I do a lot of earthy birthy kinds of art. Um, now I'm doing a lot of uh, medical illustrations for birth. I keep trying, I keep saying they keep trying to pay, uh, make me patient, but they haven't succeeded yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, I became a doula after my second daughter was born. And that was, let's see, she's 11 now. So she was about six months old when I attended my first birth. And I was just totally floored. I was like, this is what I want to do. Um, I love birth. I find it very meditative. I feel like there's so much busyness going on in my head pretty much all of the time. But when I'm in a birth space, all I have to do is just sit and be and hold space and um, serve and observe and support and that is such an amazing um, an amazing thing for me to do to just be able to turn off my brain and be into that space and so about six years ago um, I had this couple hire me Andy and Jen and Andy is a graphic designer and he made this birth plan with all of these like graphics and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is wicked cool. We should totally do something like this. Um, it, I posted it on my art page. It went viral. Penny Simkin was like, can I use this in my childbirth classes? So my mind was kind of blown there. Um, I was like, yeah, we should totally turn this into something bigger. And he's like, yeah, sure. You know, send people my way and I'll make them one. I was like, no, like, like bigger picture. Because I was really starting to feel like I wanted to move from one family, one birth at a time, to what can we do to global scale, change it from the inside out systemically. So I had this vision that, you know, we could kind of reclaim what birth plans are meant to be. So birth plans get a really bad rap. 65% of people, of uh, care providers, believe that they actually uh, create worse outcomes. You know, you've heard the birth plan is a ticket to the OR kind of a thing. Um, and really I wanted to, um, you know, turn birth plans back into a communication tool like they're supposed to be and link it up with education. So it's not like a lot of these websites out there where, you know, you kind of check the boxes and it spits out a document and you, you know, pass it on to your provider. But most families don't know how they feel about fetal monitoring or even what fetal monitoring is. They don't know the different ways that you can get induced or the benefits and risks that come with induction. They don't know, you know, what happens when somebody breaks your water. So by pairing every single one of those icons with uh, an education piece to really just walk families through what this tool is, when it's used appropriately, what are some of the benefits and risks and things to expect from that, and then just, you know, let families figure out the best tools for them and get them thinking about 
um, you know, what their preferences are for their, for their uh, birth experience. Um, so we started th talking about this about six years ago. I am not a technical founder. So, you know, having to build a platform like this was uh, slightly excruciating. Uh, <laughs> I was trying and, and all, all of the patriarchal bullshit that goes along with that, like I would um, be interviewing developers and they'd only want to talk to my male co-founder, um, you know, having a lot of people on the project that were super excited for a minute and then would be like, oh, life and busyness. I'm like, yeah, I have six kids and I'm still attending births. It's hard, but you make time for, you know, what's important to you. Um, so last year we pitched uh, Firepoint Studios, which is a all-inclusive health tech ecosystem here in Denver. So they're really trying to put Denver on the map to be a hub for health tech. And they have a fund, they have in-house developers, they have legal, they have mentorship. One of the founding members is actually serving as my fractional CTO. So really, I don't know, I, I figured that the universe would thought that I had suffered enough and was like, oh, all of those things that you're missing, I am just going to show you this way to these people that can provide it. Um, so we pitched them last March. We started building in June, uh, did beta testing in October, and we launched in November. And it's been kind of a wild ride over the past year. Um, lots of ups and downs. I mean, it's been particularly challenging because up until a couple months ago, I didn't have a team. It was just me. It was pretty hilarious. I was meeting with the hospital innovations team and they're like, oh, your, your content team did a great job. I was like, yeah, my, my team. <laughs> you wrote all the content on the motherboard website. I suspected you did, but I did. Yeah, I did. I did. Um, and it's uh, in the process of being continually reviewed. So Pam Rossio is on my team now and she's uh, an IBCLC and a certified nurse midwife. And she uh, basically has a content schedule. So every, every week she's touching on several topics to make sure that they're still current and evidence-based and curating our resource list, that sort of thing. So it's a lot to manage. I'm so glad I have help now. Um, I have an amazing team. So we've got Pam and then we've got Mandy Irby, AKA the birth nurse. And she is a labor and delivery nurse that loves to be on camera, loves to teach. Um, Kirsten Freeman is a childbirth assist or uh, she's a doula and a child childbirth educator who's helping me write some of this content now. So Mandy and Kirsten are kind of taking over some of the written copy. Um, Elaine Baca is a uh, birth photographer in Dallas, and she's going to be curating all of that content. And now, you know, they'll write things and I make them pretty. So I'll put them into really beautiful pitch decks. I'll put them into really beautiful illustrations. And um, that's kind of what I like to do more than writing anyway. Um, so yeah. That's what your genius is. That said, now I've been reading books Mm -hmm. and articles and stuff about birth and education around birth for over a decade, like 13 years or something now. And Amy, the content on your website, and I'm actually coming from the perspective of not just a, a mum's advocate and birth advocate, but also a writer. You know, I, that's what I do professionally. I, I write the tech industry. Yeah. The content on your website is, I think, superlative. There is nothing else like it out there in the world right now it's really coming from you and your voice. And it talks about now, each of these issues. Everyone go to the website and just play around with it because you'll click on an icon, right? And you'll, you'll, you'll then go like, okay, what are my choices here? And Amy will walk you through all those choices, but she'll walk you through them so down to earth and so honestly and real, and she won't hide anything from you. And it's about the, like the real choice that you now have. Like, I don't think real informed consent existed for mums until your website came about, Amy. Thank That's you. fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, I really feel, you know, I, I think if you were to boil down what I'm really passionate about, it's education and communication, but also informed choice. And what I'm really interested in is I really feel that you know, childbirth ed and doulas and all this stuff, um, you know, it's, it's only half of the equation. And I'm really passionate about um, working on the other side of the equation, which is care providers, birth teams and systems, because you're totally right. Like there, um, I'd say 
informed choice is at best very inconsistent. Like there are providers that will really sit down and discuss your options and take the time, but even they get busy. So a lot of times it's inconsistent and at worst it's absent or manipulative. I can't tell you the crazy stuff that some of my clients have been told, like there's no risks to side attack or whatever. <laughs> I'm like, except uterine rupture and stillbirth, you know, those are those are two of the things. Um, and, and I think sometimes providers, you know, I, I have a lot of empathy for them because they have maybe five minutes with somebody and they really feel like something is important. And so when you don't have the time to educate or build a relationship, you're just going to kind of say whatever you need to say to get the job done. Uh, and it really opens them up to a lot of liability. So we're also working on this tool called I Decide, which is informed choice tool at the bedside. So doctors and midwives can, um, you know, say, hey, we would like to start Pitocin, um, go through this module, we'll come back in 30 minutes, we can discuss our options. So we're really taking some of that weight off providers to educate. We have bright illustrations. We really walk them through it. And then they can spend their precious time answering patient-specific um, questions and building relationships, which is, you know, I think the best application of tech is when you, when you use it to build relationships. Absolutely. And why can't this stuff all be automated? I mean, we live in an intelligent society now. We, we, all, we have automation and tech everywhere else. I think we're putting the automation and the tech in the wrong place in birth, which is trying to make the mum a machine and a medical and a medical kind of like yep. procreative device. Whereas really birth is about love and joy and family and, you know, we need to put the technology in the right place. And you're definitely, well, definitely yeah. doing that. I mean, I think, you know, I love that you said that because I don't think 99% of providers get into birth because they really just want to, you know, manipulate parents or whatever. That's not why they do it. And so I, I would love to help them recapture some of that joy that they, um, you know, that they experienced or reasons why they got into perinatal health, you know, um, I think that's so important. I mean, compassion fatigue is a real thing. Secondary trauma is a real thing. So we need to, you know, automate and um, take the weight off of them as much as possible. And I, I uh, learned something really interesting at Denver Startup Week last week. Um, there was this session called the hospital of the future. And there's this concept and I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it's this, um, this, this idea that, you know, there's this number of how long it takes for information to double, you know, back 200 years ago, it would take maybe, you know, six months to a year for information to double. And then now in this information age, you know, it's, it's re it's doubling every single, every single, whatever it is, year or something. So, you know, we, al we always criticize providers that it takes 17 years for a study to become um, standard practice, but it's, it's really hard as a human being to be able to, you know, keep up on all of that. So, you know, we need better ways to automate some of that evidence-based information and how it inform informs um, clinical behavior. Yes. Uh, look, everyone, um, it's so interesting because it's like, Amy, uh, it's it's like we're on opposite paths, but we're now finally kind of meeting in the middle because um, people won't know me as this in the in the birth world. It's funny because the birth world is where I started off about twelve years ago. But um, I'm actually known at the moment for being a, a leading kind of woman in tech around the world and like leading leading this global community. And um, when I was saying to people, I'm going to do this, they were like, you know, letting to birth.com. They were like why are you doing that? Everyone <laughs> knows you as, you know, a tech, a, a blockchain, yeah. what are you doing, right? Whereas for you, you've gone from being a doula into going into the tech world. Yeah. And, and it's like, for me, it was like, because in the tech world, I work to advocate for women. And it's like, I, I, I've seen that in really real terms, you know, 130 million women birth every year. Um, and it's not in our control how we're birthing. And until we take back birth, we still, until we basically incentivize somehow birth education mm -hmm. and we just take it on board again, it's just natural and normal that this is something we learn about ourselves as part of learning about our bodies. And it's not something to be shamed about. And it's not anti-feminist to know about how to give birth or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Until we do those things, we can't really take our place in the world forum. You know, so it's, it's beautiful that you're bringing your work, your love, 
what you do, your wisdom, your passion, your brilliance to the world in a way that anyone anywhere can access it and, and use that as a tool. Yeah, yeah. I like to say, um, you know, to, to impact um, to impact perinatal health, we really need both a high tech and a high touch solution. So tech can be so far reaching. It can be, you know, access these maternity deserts where, you know, they don't, they have to drive several hours to find a hospital that will care for them um, or, you know, VBAC access, all of this stuff. So we can, we can impact in a global way. Um, but I like to say it's never going to take the place of somebody looking into your eyes and telling you you're going to, you're doing a good job. That's so important. So we really need both sides of the coin. Um, I, I love that show. Well, I love, and I am terrified by that show black mirror. So sometimes I can see, um, <laughs> you know, the, 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 if you follow the path of some of this technology of where it could lead us. So I think we always need to be mindful of, yeah, we don't just want to hook bodies up to these machines or you know these these tech systems and then automate everything but um yeah it's 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 an interesting time for sure uh we're seeing so much amazing innovation in in technology uh digital health and all of these amazing companies that i that i keep meeting that i'm really excited about so yeah. well, before we got on um this call together uh folks amy and i were just having a quick conversation about um the similarities almost between entrepreneurship <laughs> and labor. And like I, I, look, there's two articles I've written. One is on Hacker Noon called Mumpreneur Survival Guide about the sort of things that women who are mums go through in terms of trying to access funding for their, their amazing, in, you know, inventions yeah. and endeavors. And the other one is in Thrive Global called Do I Want to Be, Do I Need to Be an Entrepreneur? And that's about you know, the inner turmoil that goes on. And so, you know, when we were talking about uh, entrepreneurship as labor, that really resonated, you know, with me. Do you want to like expand on that for yeah. our audience? Totally, totally. Um, so yeah, I would tell people that I've been in labor for six years. I think I had prodromal labor, which is like <laughs> start and stop labor for probably about five of the last six years where I was just like, I, you know, I'd find somebody I thought was going to be a good partner and then they would disappear and I would just have this start and stop and this frustration of like, when is this actually going to start? And then when we, when we pitched Firepoint, um, then I felt like, okay, we're hitting active labor. Right. And then when we were beta testing, it was like, we were pushing and then, <laughs> and then <laughs> right, right before we launched, um, I, I had that moment. It was like I was crowding and I was like, I'm not ready to be a parent. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. It was so terrifying. And then I had, I had a surprising reaction to launching last year that I didn't anticipate. Um, I basically, I launched November 5th and then I cried for a week and I really just felt like, oh my gosh, I've been working on this for, you know, at that point, like five years. And not a whole lot of people had seen it. And now I felt like, you know, all of my insides were on the outside and I just felt so raw and vulnerable. And I think that's kind of like those moments as a new parent where you're just like, what the hell did I just do? Um, it was just, it's just a very vulnerable place. And now I'm parenting this uh, enormous tech baby. I will say I've had, I've had two natural births and I think uh, birthing this tech baby was harder. <laughs> It was definitely longer. <laughs> it is like, and trying to be a parent and an entrepreneur as well. But it's it's interesting. It's it, I write about this in the "Do I Need to Be an Entrepreneur" mm -hmm. article, particularly down the bottom, and it's of the article. And it's like, but it's just that the world is in. It's like it's everything coincides. The world is in the right place where it needs something. You as the entrepreneur in the right place in your life, you know, mm -hmm. and. And this idea is just ready mm -hmm. to be given birth to, you know, the world, because like one of the hardest things, you know, it's okay for something, the world to need something, but that doesn't mean that the world know it needs that thing. Yeah. And that's the difference between you basically being a charity or you creating something that's going to actually, people are going to buy. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it's it, it, all these things have to coincide, you know, it's, so it really is a bit like, you know, all the, the moves and everything aligning so that you you know and your body being ready to give birth and yeah. everything happening just in the right way the right time and just going with that flow and trusting it and trusting that inner that yeah. inner drive that's brought you here hey have you ever read the book big magic who's the author uh, it's 
oh my gosh, I'm totally spacing her name now. Elizabeth Gilbert, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. Um, oh. I, I love Big Magic. It's like my medicine. Um, and it's really about living creatively. And she talks about how she believes that the world is inhabited not only by, you know, people, plants, and animals, but also by ideas. And that these ideas will kind of float around and they will, they will nudge and they will prod and they will say, I really want to be born. And sometimes you're ready to do that. And sometimes you're not. Um, and if you're not, they usually find somebody else. Like she's got some wild stories of, you know, an idea that basically left her and, and found somebody else to give birth to it. And it's, it's crazy. But um, I really do feel that way. Like I, I'm first and foremost an artist, right? Like I, and, and I, I found tech to be very creative in a way I didn't expect, but I really just felt, you know, even though it was a bit stop and start, I just felt like it was an idea born um and i was ready to answer the call and i was ready to do the work and it has been an insane amount of work uh, <laughs> startups are not for the faint of heart for sure but um but it's it's been rewarding and challenging and it's taught me a lot about myself and my relationships uh and i'm yeah i'm excited to be on this journey for sure all right. Okay. I, I can feel an article, another article here brewing for Thrive Global. It's going to be, it's going to be Amy Hedera and her, uh, and her <laughs> birth journey with motherboard. Um, so look, you've actually said on your website and I utterly agree that there needs to be, you know, a revolution basically in birth education. I mean, you're doing it, but you're actually going to be creating, it's not just going to be um, the, co the written content up there. It's not just going to be the icons that you can create that kind of birth um, visual birth plan. It, you're going to be having education classes on there as well. Do you want to tell us like what your, your big vision is for that? Yeah, definitely. That's just something that we've been starting to work on over the last couple of months now that I have a team. So mm -hmm. we'll basically have two versions of the same childbirth ed module. So we'll have a parent facing one. So any parents can come online and, you know, Mandy and or I and Kirsten will, will be able to teach them whatever that module is. And then we'll basically take the same raw materials and we'll add an educator guide and a checklist and kind of simplify some of the slides and we'll repackage it for childbirth educators. So there's a lot of certifying bodies that actually um, don't provide their childbirth educators with a career curriculum, which I understand in some ways because it's it's so challenging keeping up on top of that content. And some some childbirth educators love building their own curriculum. They find it very creative and that's real fun. For others though, it's just a, such a huge hassle. So we're, we're really um, working on creating these modules to um, either, you know, buy one at a time or sort of sprinkle into your existing classes or once we have a cohesive core class and we'll be able to sell those to childbirth educators so that everything looks cohesive. It's all beautiful, updated. It's racially diverse. It's inclusive. It's, um, you know, uh, what's the word? <laughs> Um, trauma informed. Sorry, <laughs> I was like, we're we're really coming at it for from all the different angles of of um, how can we serve as much as many people as possible as ethically as possible, um, and you know not look like it's from the eighties. So. Yeah. We're excited to be building that. Our first module is going to be uh, labor positions, which I thought would be easy. And I've now done like 40 illustrations for all these different <laughs> labor positions. Um, so yeah, that, that should be releasing the next few weeks where, you know, it's the first one. So it's taking a little bit longer than expected. I think we'll get faster as we kind of figure out how we work together, but I'm really excited. It's going to be so pretty. I actually um, posted a sneak peek on our educator group. So if you are a doula or a childbirth educator or really anybody that does anything with pregnant people in the childbearing year, you can go hop on our, um, it's called motherboard birthed educator group and it should be linked to the motherboard birth page mm -hmm. so join up and you know we'll give you little sneak peeks and some freebies and stuff too so um yeah we'd love to see you on there every every aspect of the graphic design because i you know i do branding strategy right and i do customer experience kind of principles and strategy and design and everything yeah. and i just I, when i saw your facebook page and your beautiful designs i was like oh my god this <laughs> It's a startup that has it together. It's got the vision and it's got the, 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 the you know, it's, it's actually got the application of that vision. Like you cannot fail 
mm. when you've got that cohesive vision that you have it's and, and that that implementation through the beautiful visuals like you've got you've got magic happening like big magic <laughs> yeah i've been i've been so thankful that andy's been able to do the wireframes and he's he's a design user experience user interface guy so he's been able to really make a very solid minimum viable product or mvp and startup lingo um, and you know, I always laugh because when my, when I was in college, I have a BFA in illustration and I was always laughing because I was telling my dad, my dad would be like, what are you doing with your art degree? Like, don't you just want to go into something more practical? And I was like, you know what? I'm always going to be an artist. And so now I am the CEO of a tech company that does all of our medical illustrations. So, you know, I think that's a big part of our brand is that it's a very visual brand. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of um, differentiation that goes along with, with being a visual brand for sure. Hey, you know, in your birth positions, we, yeah. maybe we could talk about that for a bit. Like, you know, you, you, um, you talk about upright birth and stuff like that. Do you want to like talk about to us, like some, like some of the great birthing positions that maybe mums don't know about yet that they're going to see in your amazing corpse? Yeah, definitely. So we, we organize them. Let me just pull this up real fast so I can, um, so that I can make sure to get all of them. But so we, we classify them into four different categories. So we've got um, active positions, rest positions, asymmetric positions, and, you know, birth ball, peanut ball positions. And there's about anywhere, 36 to 40 of them. So we've got, you know, let's see, some of the some of the positions we've got, you know, sitting on a birth ball, curb walking, dancing, dangling, exaggerated side lying, you know, frog seated, hands and knees, hanging, inversion, uh, kneeling like a Captain Morgan, kind of a lunge kneeling. Um, and we've got, I think, uh, 11 different peanut ball uh, positions. So Mandy, Mandy is kind of the peanut ball queen. So we've got some peanut ball positions that a lot of people haven't even seen. Most people have seen the one where you're, you know, kind of exaggerated sideline with the ball between your legs, but we've got, you know, different straddles and squats and you know, this one called the uh, fire hydrant where you're kind of like kneeling with one leg up in the air. So we're going to, we're going to classify it by those four categories and then we're going to break it down further into like, if you're having prodromal labor that keeps starting and stopping, then these are the positions that might help your baby get into a better position so that labor begins or get them to engage or tuck their head. Um, if you are, you know, wanting engagement, if you are wanting to rest because you've been at this for 18 hours and you just need a, to see if you can sleep in between, here's the positions that, you know, would be best for you. So we're, we're going to have a, an awesome little cheat sheet with all these little thumbnails of illustration and then um, guide about, you know, if you're experiencing this. And here's what I you mean, need to do. Being able to practice these positions and be aware of them before labor would be so critical because you don't realize, particularly in active labor, like how exhausted you're going to get your poor little thighs yeah. are going to get. And um, I never used a peanut ball, but I can really imagine it would take a, like, a lot of the strain off of your thighs and your legs during that active labor when you are sort of up and down and up and down all the time and nothing else you know really supports you does yeah, it yeah definitely and and sometimes you know you know, babies need a very relaxed environment as far as ligaments and muscles and all of that mm. to be able to, to rotate into a good position. And so sometimes even just the act of like engaging your core, if you're doing hands and knees or something like that, can actually prevent baby from turning. So using these tools and these props to kind of get into good positions so that your baby can move down can be really, really helpful. Um, and we just sort of, you know, encourage them to change it up every 30 minutes to 60 minutes even if it's a resting position you're still doing something different you're still giving your body um, a good uh, or giving your baby a good opportunity to to get into a good position yeah it's amazing i don't think this could really come together without you and your you know your experience as a doula and and a graphic designer it would just be an entirely different project do you, do you want to tell us like what you think some of um like maybe some of the positive impact on the world like that you know that this this collaboration kind of between tech and motherhood can have yeah i so one of our hey guys be quiet it's all right we can't really hear them it's life. It's life. <laughs> You're just my avalanche of children. Um, 
So, yeah, so um, one of our partners is the um, Quad Cities Child Abuse Council, and they're doing something really amazing there where they're um, using doulas that are basically a little bit more almost like social workers where they're, they're not just for the end of pregnancy, they kind of support through the whole childbearing year. And they're using doulas as a way to um, decre decrease child abuse, which I think is an amazing, uh, an amazing mission. And so we've partnered with them and given them access to motherboards so that in their prenatal uh, visits, they can help their families build boards and be more active and involved in their birth process. So that's been really fun. Um, you know, we have about 140 partnerships, professional partners. So these are mostly doulas and childbirth educators that come on board and they, um, you know, get a, a bulk amount of memberships at a discount that they can hand out to their clients. So that's been really amazing because you can see all the, all the preferences in real time. So they can even invite your backup so that if you, if either of you roll out of bed at two in the morning, you can at a snapshot, just really understand um, or remi remind yourself what, what's important to this family. Um, so yeah, there's, there's so many different ways that we could implement. Like we're, we're working on a partnership with a fertility planning app so that we can integrate all of this content from day one. Because as you said, a lot of people don't know what they don't know. And it's not until they're like 36, 37 weeks pregnant and their provider is pushing them into an induction that they don't think is warranted. And then they're trying to do all their research. So the great thing about Kendara is we're going to be integrating some of our content into their pregnancy mode. So we'll, we'll literally be able to tell them what to focus on from from the minute they pee on a stick which is going to be huge right it's going to be huge um while putting our illustrations on there and making their app prettier so i'm really excited about that partnership uh, as it evolves so we've got a lot of balls in the air we've got a lot of things that we're working on and i'm just really staying open and curious about where this takes us and um and who's going to be an excited and involved partner for us really my only goal is to get this information into the hands of families and i'm not terribly particular how that happens so you know we've had a lot of organizations and companies come to us with creative solutions and i always hear them out so yeah Fantastic. Look, I hope, I'm hoping that everyone who's been watching this, um, the birth webinar series knows what your necklace is. I mean, I hope we all well, do, but do you yeah. want to tell us what it is? I've got oxytocin. Yeah. My, my oxytocin necklace. Oh, Sweet there. as. Beautiful. <laughs> I'm so glad that you wear that. Like, in, it's, a, in a, it's, a, it's in all Hamie's um, pictures, if everyone, if you yeah. look <laughs> yeah. My inner yeah. birth nerd. <laughs> how, can, how can people follow Motherboard on social media? Yeah, so our Facebook page is just Motherboard Birth. Um, we're really mostly on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram is also Motherboard Birth. Um, we sometimes post more, um, you know, partnerships and more business-related stuff on LinkedIn, on my LinkedIn profile, but really Facebook and Instagram is the best way to go. We've also, you know, we'll periodically share free downloads of like interview questions for your OB or interview questions for doulas or midwives, um, how to get truly informed choice. Uh, so keep an eye out for that on social media. Um, and yeah, we'll, we just would love to, to hear from you and hear your feedback of, of what you think of our product products. Well, thank you, Amy, for being with us. I think the landscape is going to look very different 10 years from now for women and birthing women because of, of you and what you're doing. And I kind of hope that, I hope that, I mean, I hope that what I'm doing will still have a place, but even if it doesn't, it, the world is in a better place and that's all that's important. Well, I think and you're leaving us with you too. Yeah. yeah we are. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just would be really like, obviously motherboard has a big um part of this vision for you but like what do you how do you feel like a mother you know going into birth can day today can can find her voice during birth i think it's it's really a matter of being still and trusting your inner voice i think a lot of times you know especially women are taught to be polite and they're taught to be uh, not make any trouble and not be opinionated and not speak up. And it's combined with this, well, at least in the United States, it's combined with this very patriarchal, very hierarchical system that is the, the medical system. And so we're, we're taught that we just sort of Im explicitly, implicitly trust 
uh, care providers. And it's this external locus of control. So a lot of people are like, well, I'm, I don't need to worry about that because I'm just going to go into my birth process and they're just going to tell me what I need to do. And what a lot of people find and maybe learn the hard way is that sometimes their priorities don't match up to that of their provider. So I would really encourage birthing folks to trust their intuition always to really sit with that and be like, wow, you know, how did that make me feel when they said that or when they, you know, um, when they want to do this or whatever. And, you know, find your voice or use motherboard as a tool to communicate you know, what's important to you, because this isn't just a medical event. This is the birth of your child. You know, I don't need a relationship with the person who sets my leg when I break my leg, but birth is such an intimate experience. And it's really important to be able to articulate that as much as possible. Yeah. Thank you, Amy, for taking time out of your busy entrepreneur's schedule. Good luck um, in all of your funding rounds coming up. And um, as you get ready, you know, is it, you know, there's seed A, B, D, I don't know. It's also confusing, but good luck. Um, <laughs> all. And I, I just, you know, I just think, you know, when we connect again a few years down the track, uh, the world will be different. You know, if we have this discussion again a few years down the track, it'd be a totally different landscape because I of know. you. Well, it's crazy. I mean, the, the, where the company is at and where it's headed now is completely different than three months ago, six months ago. Like we, we just have new and different and creative solutions or opportunities. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to see where we'll be next year. I probably have no idea sitting here now what, where we'll be at. And that's kind of exciting. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's good. <laughs> Well, I've only got complete admiration for you because I know what a big journey it is. It's, 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 you know, like the thing with birth, right? You've got to believe in yourself as a mum and go like, yeah, this is my body. This is my baby. I know what's going on here. And the same is for being an entrepreneur. You have to be, because everyone will be telling you like, no, nah, that's dumb. No, nah, you won't make money. No, no, nah, nah, it's no good. Blah, blah. And you have to go, you know what? This is, this is me and this is my idea and I think there's something here and I think I can do it, you know, and have that same faith, that level of faith in yourself. And yeah, they always say, you know, nine out of 10 startups fail. And I'm like, that is extremely unhelpful for me to hear right now, <laughs> you know, because at the, at the end of the day, I just feel like this is something that, like I said, needs to be born. And, um, you know, I think you can do a lot with just tenacity and resilience and creativity. So, I'm going to keep marching down this path until I hit a brick wall and then I'll, you know, turn into a different direction. We'll figure it out. So <laughs> fail because I think the founders are arrogant, right? And they, they don't have a product market fit. Yeah. It's not actually neat. They've just gone, isn't this a cool idea? Let's make money from it. But they haven't actually looked at who their customer is, what their customer needs and what they value. And you've actually built something like to respond to that need of the customer, not the other way around. So you're not going to fail. You're going to be that one. Why? Right. Thank you. You can, you can <laughs> quote me on that any way you like, um, <laughs> but that is the truth. Okay. So you're going to be fine. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone. This has been a slightly um, different learning to birth webinar, more about, you know, the birth of ideas and entrepreneurship as a mom, which, Oh my God, as mothers, we, we all need to believe in ourselves and our ideas and, God damn it, we need to find ways to support ourselves financially too. So we've done a beautiful journey together, you and I, Amy. Everyone, you can follow Learning to Birth um, at Learning, sorry, at Learn to Birth, Facebook, Instagram. And uh, I hope you really enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you next time. So see you, Amy. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs>